Hello. Good morning. This is Andy Clark from 7FM. Is that Graham? Yes, good morning. How are you? Very good. How are you? Thank you very much for uh, spending the time to talk to us this morning, Graham. I appreciate it. you're really busy at the moment. No um, problem. But you are the bassist, vocalist, original co-founder of 10CC, along with the other guys, Eric Stewart, Kevin Godley and Lowell Cream. And That's correct. 10CC are currently on tour at the moment, and you're going to be at Cheltenham Town Hall this Friday night, the 9th of November. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a theme for this tour? What, what's it all about, Graham? Well, um, one thing that's that, that's uh, interesting about this, the touring this year is that it's the 40th anniversary of the release of uh, Donna, oh, our yes. first single uh, released in 1972. Quite played hard to believe. <laughs> I know, it was played <laughs> by uh, Tony Blackburn, wasn't it? Yes, and it was. It was, his, it was his record of the week, I think. I think it was. Well, you were working with those guys for three years before you assumed the name 10CC, back in 1972. Yeah. You're still the only original member now, um, through its evolution. How did it all start back then? Uh, well, I knew Kevin and um, from a, a club in North Manchester that we we were both in different bands. Um, Lol was in a band there also, so Kevin uh, and we used to rehearse there in exchange for uh, playing for the, uh, the, the club dances for free. And um, Kevin and I eventually ended up in a band together called the Mockingbirds. Um, that what you know was we were kind of semi-professional loved what we were doing but nothing actually really happened i started writing songs had a few hits in the 60s um was working you know for various different people you know it's a very interesting time particularly the sort of mid to late 60s um i met eric stewart uh and he and i were together in the mind benders for a short while yeah, um, i wasn't an original member of that i was a sort of like one of the last people to join, uh, right before its demise, funnily enough. But Eric had started a, a recording studio called Strawberry Studios in Stockport and uh, asked me to become a partner in it, which I did. Um, I was working in America um, doing some stuff and was getting a bit fed up there and decided to bring the project that I was working on there back to the studio. And um, that was sort of one of the ca catalysts for us all getting together. So Kevin, Lowell, myself and Eric worked on this particular project the thing was though the main thing about us getting together was really the studio because when the studio wasn't working we would uh, record and write and record when there was no one else there and oh, I see, um, yeah. we just did that for our own sort of enjoyment really and then we suddenly realized we should really become a band and i think was, was it jonathan king that signed you up to was it uk records yeah jonathan ran our first uh, record company uk records According to Wikipedia, by his own account, King chose the name after having a dream in which he was standing in front of the Hammersmith Odin in London, where the board read, 10cc, the best band in the world. Is that true? That is absolutely correct. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Something else again from, from the Wikipedia page. It says Stuart and Goldman were predominantly pop songwriters. Do you, do you agree with that? Would you class yourself as a pop songwriter? Well, I think probably we were more... Um sort of commercially minded, whereas Kevin Law were more, sort of, a little more avant-garde, if you like. But it really was the, uh, it was the combination of the four of us that made it what it was. Definitely. You know, it wouldn't have been what it was without us being together. Or even though Eric and I did carry on very successfully after Kevin and Law left the band, I think in the initial stages we needed, we needed each other. I think they left him, was it around mid-70s? 76. Or 76, yeah. Do you still speak with the guys? Uh, yeah, I do. Well, Kevin, I do. I see, you know, Kevin and I have always kept in touch with, with one another. And, uh, in fact, when we played at the um, Albert Hall in May this year, uh, Kevin came and, and did four numbers with us. Wow. Which is fantastic. I read that. That's, that is great. I mean, you've had some fantastic songs, haven't you? I mean, Rubber Bullets, I'm Not In Love, Life Is A Minestrone, and one I like, I, I must admit, I'm a keyboardist, I've got a MIDI file of this, I love this, Dreadlock Holiday. What's, right. what's that about? Or can you not say? What do you think it's about? <laughs> it, it's whatever you, th you know, I can can't start explaining songs. Yeah. But why, you know, I'm sure you have an impression of I it. I probably what it, do, actually. What it means, you know. <laughs> I mean, some of it, let's put it this way, some of it is factual and some of it is made up. Oh, right, okay. As with, with a lot of songs, you start off with an original, I mean, I had the, the, the chorus, for, I got that from a conversation I had with a, a guy I met in, uh, in Jamaica. Fantastic. And um, he actually said to me, you know, we were talking about sports, and yep. I said, what about cricket? Do you like cricket? He said, no, I don't like cricket, I love it. <laughs> 
he just gave me the line. I mean, after the departure of Goldlin and Cream Stewart, um, it says here Stewart and Goldman opted to continue as NCC working with the drummer uh, Paul Burgess. Yes. Did you find that difficult at all, or, or was it? Did it just naturally no, happen? No, the only difficult part was d d was making the decision as to whether we were had a right to retain the name, and uh, we had so much. Um, there were a few com a combination of things that actually brought us down on the side of carrying on as 10CC rather than creating a new band. It's all worked out. Um, no, no, we had a you know we had a big run of hits. I mean, I was talking to Jules Holland last week as well, um, and he was saying that when Squeeze got to number two with Cool for Cats, it sold around half a million copies. But nowadays, it only takes something like, is it 20 or 30,000 downloads to get to yeah, number one? No, it's, the, yeah, the, bis the, the record business is shot. But it, it is, it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, what, what's, what the best business to be in is, is uh, either as a songwriter, because you always get royalties from that, yeah. or, uh, and, um, and uh, touring. Uh, people want to see live music, and that's why the, this band has been so successful. It's, it's really the music of Ten CC. People are coming, you know, they want to hear it, and they want to they want to hear live music. On that point, do you think that artists today have it easier than you guys did? You know, how would you have made it without the media support that these guys get nowadays? You did it by hard work, slogging it and, and pushing it. Whereas, yeah, I think I think if you do it that way, uh, well, let's put it this way. My career started in 1965, and I'm still doing it. Wow. So I think I had a good foundation of slugging around in various bands, and you know, I won't say I had a hard time or anything because I no, loved no. every minute. I love every minute of what I do. So I think there's something to be said for, like, as in anything, having a strong foundation. Definitely, definitely. Back in those days, you either had it or you, or you didn't. And if you had it, it worked. And if you didn't, it didn't. And you clearly have it. I mean, to, to be in a band and to get a band to be successful. You know, there's several examples of bands that have gone through so many changes and so much heartache, and people have come and people have gone, and there's fights and there's this and there's that, until eventually it sort of, you get this beautiful thing at the end of it that uh, is worthwhile, and I think that's the way it should go. And, uh, you know, I think, yeah, I, I won't even talk about the reality shows, because that's, that's actually... A sort of the entertainment business rather than the music business. Well, that's ironic, because that's my next question. What do you think of the X Factor? <laughs> well, I've just told you, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> if, if, you weren't, if you weren't entertaining and performing, what do you think you would have done? What's your next sort of love to music? Or does that um, cover everything? I really? don't know. I like cooking, but I don't think I'd be a chef or anything. Um, <laughs> I, I've no idea. You know, I'm, I'm very sort of blink, rather blinkered in that, you know, music's always been my... Uh, I'm going to sound... The, sound like a song it's always been my first love well, um, it is yeah uh you know i can't do anything else and you know there's other things i would like to do but i you know um i'm very happy with what i'm doing yeah do you play by ear do you do a bit of both or do you yeah. do you read music no, no i don't read no no but i i mean i'm self-taught like yeah. A lot Many, of musicians. Uh, yeah. Musicians, yes. My mother used to uh, used to tell me off for playing by ear, and my music teacher said, "Don't, it's a gift. And you just let him it do it." <laughs> oh, yeah, I think. I mean, I know people that can only play if they've got music in front of them. Yeah. I think that's a that's a real shame. You can't feel the music. I don't think if you if you're reading it, you've got to feel it, haven't you, when you're playing it and be part of it. Yeah, no, I think it's great if you can read and and you can then you can pick up a piece of music and play anything, but. Uh, I think playing by ear has been a, uh, you know, yeah. well, you, you, it, it's, it's just brilliant to be able to do that. Where is 10CC going to be going now? You're going to carry on touring? What, what do you think? Yes. Are yeah, we... we're, we're in the middle of a tour now. We're going yep. to Truro today, and then we can we continue touring until the end, until uh, December the 2nd. Then we've got a bit of a break, and then we're going to Russia at the wow. in January. We're going to... Um, I was going all over the shop, but I'm doing a, a, an acoustic tour next year, next April. Oh, excellent. I'm going to give 10cc a break in the UK. Yeah. And I'm doing a, a, an acoustic tour, doing songs that I did from the 60s, to some 10cc songs, some new songs from uh, my new solo album, Love and Work. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and that sounds Various great. other bits and pieces. Brilliant. Do you still, it's probably a silly question, but do you still get that buzz or do you get nerves? What do you get when you go out on stage? Does do, do, does it feel the I same? Think you, a bit of nerves is always good. You've not got to be a bit on edge. You know, you want to be on top of your game. So it's like going out and doing anything. Um, you need to be a bit uh, edgy. Absolutely. <laughs> it soon goes though. Well, once you hit the stage and everything's fine. Yeah. Uh, then that's that's great. 
It's been absolutely fantastic talking to you, Graham, this morning. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk okay. to a small little thank radio you. station like us. But good luck with the tour, not that thank you need you. it. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Right, yeah, thank you very much, Graham. Take Cheers. care. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.